Fashion is a bit like gardening because a spectacular spring takes a lot of hard work in winter. Designer Gavin Rudger and his team have been very busy over the past few months and the fruits of their labour were on display when he presented his latest spring-summer collection. Settle back for a rampside view. As a designer, marketer, entrepreneur and UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador, Gavin Roger has a very simple mission statement, which is to exceed expectation, as could be seen when spring arrived a little early in Midran this year. Mela's guest reporter, Karusha Gavinde, was at the bustling Waterfall Park venue as the first buds of the new fashion season were brought together under Gavin's watchful eye. We're about to go behind the scenes to check out Gavin Rogers' new collection before anybody else does. We also want to see the excitement and a little bit of chaos backstage before the show. Let's go! Each model's makeup was dialed to maximize the effect of the wearer and the outfit. And with everything under control, Gavin discussed his latest work with Karusha. This collection is actually inspired by La Belle Epoque. So it was a time really when fashion came into being and the term couture actually really started. It's the age of beauty, the age of good things. It was a time when the world was having a little bit of peace and, and people were focused on really pretty things. It was the start of couture as a craft with designers during that period. And so I wanted to bring that back and we wanted to create something magical. And you, when you go into the show, you'll see it's about creating a dream and it's almost mystical in a way. So your team have worked out of your Cape Town Atelier to create garments that are technically difficult. Can you explain that to us? Couture is about that. It's about working with the best that you have at your disposal. Yes. And it's about uh, finishing those garments beautifully. My garments are as beautiful inside as they are on the outside. And that's why this is really important because it's a mark of craftsmanship. Kevin, how far do you think South African fashion has come and where do you see it heading? What I'm very happy is about seeing diverse representation on the catwalk. So that for me is really interesting. Is I'd like to see a consistency in the standards of production, craftsmanship and quality. How important do you think events like Fashion Week are for South African designers? I think for Fashion Week is really a very important platform if one wants to showcase one's work to a client base that one has. I think for young designers what's really important is that, you, that they use this platform to actually get their name and their brand out there. Josie Trent said his model their personal style at the fountains. While in the foyer, Karusha took the opportunity to find out what local fashion fundies were expecting. I think it's always refreshing to see new seasons coming up and what's in store for, for us from various different designers. I'm looking forward to see new releases, fashion trends, like something you're going to really follow for this summer, for this coming summer. I'm looking forward to see what is it that Gavin has researched and what is it that he's going to execute tonight. This year we're celebrating the decade of African fashion and excellence in fashion. So I'm really looking forward to all of the designers, particularly our own interpretation of African fashion. With A-listers filling the front row seats, the scene was set for the emergence of spring from the frosty forest of winter. White has always been the default tone for cool summer style. So it was interesting to see how Gavin expanded the palette with blue tones ranging from sky to indigo, as well as introducing a dramatic touch of black. Floral motifs made up the primary visual theme, applied as embroidery or even as lace. Although the era of beauty spanned the years from 1871 to 1914, it is often associated with the Art Nouveau style, which drew inspiration from the rhythms and patterns of the natural world, with geometry as a counterpoint. Animal prints added a further nod to nature, as well as echoing the period's fascination with the exotic, and all these elements could be seen in Gavin's creations. The garments were as much a tactile experience as they were a feast for the eye, with sensual fabrics such as luxurious silk cotton blends, silk satins, tools and silk georgia dominating the selection. With spring and summer having thawed the ice of winter on the ramp, 
it was time for the designer to take a well-earned bow. After the show, guests could enjoy some refreshment, discuss the outfits and take a closer look at Gavin's latest venture into the lifestyle domain. Oh wow, that scent is heavenly. Gavin Raja has collaborated with a homeware retailer, inspired by the collection we've just seen, to bring you scented candles and linen so that you can have his brand of ultimate luxury in your home. Interior design is a long-standing field of interest for Gavin and he applies the same creative approach to soft furnishing as he does to fashion. I've always been doing interiors and now I've just extended into a more commercial space and, and I wanted to be a little bit more accessible. So I've started with the first collection and as you can see, the collection I've just showed there's a kind of tangible correlation with what we've done and what we're showing, so that's really important for me. But what I wanted uh, people to have is uh, have a part of our lifestyle, our world, and I think this offers them that. The consensus among the guests was that Gavin had achieved his goal, and Karisha couldn't resist the temptation to experience the Raja touch firsthand. This fabric is so rich and luxurious, and so much attention to detail. I think I'll just fall asleep here. 